Alright there procrastinauts, my name's Paboyan and welcome back to another special episode of Kerbal Space Program. Now for starters I would first like to draw your attention once again to the version number in the corner. Oh yes, Squad have deemed it necessary once again to hand out experimental access to the media group so that means I'm living the high life, science and research and development, oh yeah. So. Rather than just showing off all the crazy stuff all at once, I'm actually going to attempt to do a fairly semi-structured episode, he says. Hopefully, anyway. But um, I think the first thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to click Start Game. And this is where the fun begins, ladies and gentlemen. For the first time ever, if you click Start New, you will be able to choose Career Mode, which is... Um, if you're like me and you've been playing the game for a long time, it's a very nice, it, it's just a little bit of a buzz to see career mode actually there and being able to be selected. It's pretty damn awesome. I'm going to get out the standard procrastinate flag for such things and we're just going to leave the name as default. Let's head on over to the Space Center. Now, as you guys know, we've had some new scenery added into the game. Uh, this is in the way of the research and development building. Now, for the most part, I'm not going to be showing you that just yet. Oh no, I'm going to be diving into the other half of this whole new update, which is the science. Now, the way science works is, as you're going out and you're doing your rockets and you're doing your exploring and whatever, you can do experiments and then store the data. That data can then be either transmitted back to Kerbin or it can be brought back with you in a pod or whatever. Now, um, once you get enough science, you can then spend that science within the research and development uh, building to unlock new parts. Now, on the subject of new parts and whatnot, you'll be pretty good to see that if I go into the VAB, there is only one pod. Now, if you think that is bad, just check out some of the parts we actually have on offer. Now, the game does not go easy on you straight off the bat. Oh no, does it help? I mean, you can build stuff with the very limited parts it gives you, but it's it's very restrictive on what you can do. In fact, I'm centered on an item there that uh, I will talk about, right? Yeah, in fact, you know what? Let's talk about that first. Let's go ahead and go to the pod. Now, normally, I imagine what people will do when they first play the game is they will probably build a rocket that looks something like this. Now, from here, it is possible to do a little bit of science and experimentation. However, I believe I may have found an even better way, which I think is more appropriate for the game. I'm just going to go ahead and launch this pod as is. Uh, in fact, no, I'm not going to send it as is. I'm going to put a antenna, an antenna, a antenna, an antenna, I think is the right one. Yeah, I'm just going to put an antenna on top there. I'm going to go ahead and launch. Ooh, loading! Alright, wicked. So here we are on the launch pad. Now, from here, there's a few different sciencey things we can do. Now, for the first and foremost and most important one, the one you should always remember, is the crew report. If you, if you right click on a pod, uh, you'll see you get a new option in the context menu saying crew report. If I give this a click here, it will bring up your record of the crew's assessment of the situation. Now, from the screen, we can do a couple of things. We can see that it is uh, five mits. I'm not sure what that power is, but five, uh, five mits is how much power it will require to transmit that data, or that might be the storage size, so it might be five megabytes. I, I'm not too sure. But the overall scientific value of the data that we've got is only worth 1.5 science. That's pretty damn low. So, what I'm just going to do here is I'm going to, for now, I'm just going to go ahead and keep the data. We could transmit it to the uh, the uh, research and development center directly. However, this is a, uh, incurs a massive power cost. Now, I don't know if I will be able to actually do this right now, but I'll give it a go. Let's go ahead and transmit the data. So what will happen is our aerial will extend. It'll transmit the data. Oh, and there we are. Five data received on crew report from launch pad. 1.5 science added. Nice. So there we are. We've actually done our first experiment and we only used 30 of a power. This this actually shows you how important power is now. Yeah, I know it was important before for controlling your rockets and whatnot, but now if you want to do extreme science, then you're going to have to be very careful on your power consumption. But for now, let's have a look at what else we can do. We can um, go on an EVA and if I give... Jebediah Kerman, a little click, you'll see that I can do two things here. I can do an EVA report, 
which I'll give a little click for. It's like, I don't think spacesuit was entirely necessary to get here, was it? Well, that's fair enough. Uh, to transmit this data, it will be 8 mits, 8 megabytes, and the scientific value will be 2.4. Now, I could keep this data, or I could send it again like I did before. Now, the Kerbals themselves can't transmit data directly. They have to do it through a pod uh, with an antenna attached to it. So for now, we're just going to have to keep it. But what I will say now is you'll see this number here. If we transmit this data, it is only worth, uh, rather than bringing it back to Kerbin directly, it's only going to be worth 50% of the total value. So we will be getting 1.2 science for transmitting it rather than the 2.4 that we get for recovering the pod. So, more often than not, I suppose it's a good idea to keep the data and bring back as much as you can. I mean, sometimes it will be impossible to do, so transmitting the data is going to be the only option, but for now, we can just keep the data. Uh, another thing you can do while on EVA, if you're on a surface of a planet like I am, you can, you can take a surface sample, which will bring up another window, which will tell us some more information. The surface is charred and coated with a burnt rocket propellant. There are also trace amounts of conspicuous green substance. Nice. So. The data size for this one, if we want to transmit, is 30 mits. This is a big one, but the overall payout is a lot larger for the science. We get nine science for this. Once again, we've got 50% if we choose to transmit it, so we'd only get 4.5. But for now, I'm going to keep the data. If I wanted to, if I wanted to take another sample, I could hit the discard data button, but for now, for now I'm just going to go ahead and keep the data. Wicked. All right, and one last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to head back into the pod. And jobs are good, and we are ready to. Oh, actually, no, we're not ready just yet to actually recover the pod. You, we had some messages there just to say that we had some stored data. If we right click on the pod again, you'll see that we have a new option for not only the crew report, but the review of uh, review stored data, which means we get to check out the surface sample and the, uh, the EVA report. So that's pretty cool. We can keep both of those data there. So click those buttons. We can also do another crew report because I transmitted the old one so let's go ahead and do that. It'll be worth 0 0.6 but it's it's 0 0.6. I'm, I'm not going to go wrong with it so there we go. Now we're ready to go to the, back to the space centre. This brings us, brings us on to the next part of all this, the research and development part of it. So I'm going to go ahead and click here. Now at the moment the tech tree is very small. We haven't even researched anything yet so the first thing we need to do is we need to take a... oh actually no, I've skipped ahead a bit. I've just realised if you look at the mouse I've only got one science. Now go ahead and go to the tracking station. I was wondering what had happened then, but never mind. So, we've got a pod selected, and we'll go for the recover option, which was introduced last patch. It uh, didn't really have much of a feature other than to just get craft back that you had on Kerbin. Now, this time if I click it, it'll give me the option to do so, and then I'll get... Ooh! Hello! Now, this is new. Now, you see, I've only just installed this version. Oh, excellent! So, a summary for Untitled Spacecraft. This has told us... Oh, I didn't even expect this, man. That's a, that's a nice little surprise. I've, I've been playing the older experimental version that I've all just updated to this one now. Because I really didn't expect them to put something like this in so fast, but this is nice. So, um, here we've got a total like count of all the science that we made. We've made 13 science on this trip, so that's not bad at all. So, let's go ahead and go to done. From here on out, now we can go back to the research and development facility. That's nice. I like that. I like that touch a hell of a lot, squad. Kudos on that. Um, right, so first things first. Now we actually have 13 science, we can go to a basic rocketry pack. Now, this is going to cost us... where's the science requirement? Um, research, five science, here we go. So yeah, this will cost us five science to unlock this, and for, for our troubles we get the medium fuel tank, the tiny fuel tank, the... oh, that I'll explain in a second, and a decoupler. Now this, this is some awesome stuff this is right here. The Mystery Goo Containment Unit. Now this is one of the first of the few new science bits and bats that we've got given in this update. I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and research this, and you'll see what happens when I click that is that we now get a bit more of an expanded tree. From here we can go to this one where we can get some extra thrusters and some solids. Uh, from here we can get nose cones, uh, fins, and some side decouplers. And on top of that we can also 
get some parachutes and some landing legs. Oh, and a small engine as well. That's always good. The, each of these costs 15 science. As you can as you can imagine, like as you go through the tree, more stuff costs more science. So it's more important to bring as much scientific equipment with you on your missions as possible, which kind of adds a whole new layer to the game that was never there before. So that's always pretty good. Let's go ahead and go to close. Um, from here now, I'm going to go get myself set up and I'll bring you back in the middle of a mission where we'll do some more science. Alright, don't judge. So I went for the cheap option. It's not a bad idea, plus it's pretty funny regardless. Now, I built myself just a simple system here. One, two, three stages, boom, done. Should be getting me into like a suborbital trajectory at least. Now, for this little experiment, I've brought two of the mystery goo containers, but I've decided to leave the antenna at home. Why? Because I intend on bringing this data back in one piece. So, without further ado, uh, I don't even know why I'm doing the acceleration, because when I hit this button, it's just going to go like this. Boom. Right, so, hopefully the podsats can keep this thing under control. Now, um, this is going to take a moment, I think. Solid fuel burns pretty damn fast, but once it gets to the lower stage, we're going to start screaming through the air at God knows what pace, so I don't know if the SAS is going to be able to hold us. It's never a good thing, never a good thing indeed. We're about to come out to the uh, next stage, three, two, one, go. Go. Damn it, they need to be in a stage together, they do. So how high are we going now? 3,000 meters. Don't worry, I've got every bit of confidence in this little rocket system here that we will get into orbit. Do -do 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 -do. Alpha fuel breaching 200 meters per second and we're already at 5,000 meters. I'm going to get a little bit of a picture on now we're reaching 300 meters a second. Yeah, and we're coming up to 10,000 meters as well. Okay, next one, go. Right, this is it. This is where we go into fucking overdrive now. This is the last one. This, this is what's going to bring us straight into a nice orbit. As long as I can get the ascent pattern right. So for this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, observe the mystery goo now. I'm just going to have a quick look at it. Uh, now, nah, we're going to trash that data for now because I'm not happy with that. Come on, this way. Keep pointing this way. Alright, with that last bit of fuel, get yourself up high as you can go. Yeah, that should be nice. So from there, we can go. Boop! Excellent snake! And now we have one fully capable suborbital pod ready to be doing science. Now, if I go ahead and do a bit of jiggery pokery here, I can go ahead now and now check the observe the mystery goo container. It says the goo seems to be getting pretty cold now. That's worth seven, and it stores ten. So I'm going to keep that for now. Uh, I don't know if you noticed there. But that actually said it was going to cost, uh, it, you'd only get 40% of the total value of that if you were to transmit the data. That's another reason why you want to bring your data back. It can get ridiculous. I'm not sure if it's affected by distance or even if the satellite relay system's in. But even if there isn't, someone's going to mod that in straight off the bat. I'm also hoping that come, uh, come to some point in the future, we'll be able to um, get more sciencey parts. Now, for those of you who played with the Curiosity Rover replica by Lionhead, you'll know it has little robotic arms that you can actually move. I'd like to be able to do stuff like that for my rovers, but that's all fluff stuff. You're probably, you're more than likely going to see that from uh, modders before you do anything else. How far have we gone out here? 200,000 meters. It's incredible. Alright, let's get up to the apoapsis and then do some experiments, shall we? Whoop! Alright, observe the mystery goo. The goo seems to have dumped into a sphere, and it also appears to become brittle, so that's worth 10. So on top of the 7 or 6 of whatever it was that we get for the other one, we get an additional 10 for this one. So I'm going to keep the data for now. Um, I'm going to do a crew report while I'm here. It seems we're very much in space right now. The sky, it seems to be mostly below us. So that's worth 5 science, so I'll definitely keep a go of that, and we're going to have a go of the EVA report as well. So we're going to have a bit of a float. Get out a little bit, and we're going to toggle on one of these EVA reports. You'll notice that you can't do a, take a, a sample up here, because obviously, you're in space. You can't do shit like that. So, EVA report. That's worth eight science. You've recorded your observations about the situation. Um, I'm pretty sure you can get better ones than that, but I'm going to keep that for now anyway. I'm going to head back up to the pod, and we are going to speed up time, and we're going to crash land. 
in style. Hopefully not crash, more land, but you get the idea. When these things come back from space, it's never really a landing, is it? It's just crashing down to the surface as fast as you can go. Well, here we go. I'm going to get myself nice and down for this. Alright. Face the retrograde. Um, what I really should have done is I should have put the deadly re-entry uh, mod on for this. Now, I've no I, although I haven't really tested many mods, I have tested some, and compatibility seems to be pretty damn good in this version. I will say that. Oh, here we go. We're burning up, burning up quite badly. In fact, oh, oh man, slow down. The G's are getting mega high, man. Oh, but no, they're chilling out a little bit. Uh, I think it's time to pull the parachute as well. Oh god, the G's! Now there we are. We're done. I'll let the uh, pod do its own thing now. So there we are. That's the science and research and development part of this update. There's a ton of mo there's a ton more stuff to go through, like uh, how all the planets have biomes and doing experiments in different areas can have different results. Like say on Kerbin, you could do it on the mountains. You can do it in the deserts. If you do it from different positions in space, or like a polar orbit, or so on and so forth. And from what I've read this seems to happen across like most of the planets if not all of the planets so that's always something pretty good to do there's going to be plenty to do with science in the game now once this pod lands we're going to go back to the uh the what's it called the tracking station we're going to see how much science it's totally worth yes we get the idea we know all about time warp dirty filthy time warp but yeah, we're not doing too bad, are we? As a quick mission, Jebediah Kerman's pretty happy with himself. Uh, come on, land you dirty thing! Right, there we go. So, good times, good times are had by all. Uh, space center, all that without accelerating once. Easy. So, tracking station. P1, splash down. Oh yeah, I just called it the P1 for no apparent reason. I couldn't think of a decent name. We're gonna hit recover. Uh, yes, we do want to recover, and what do we get? So, in this little expedition, we got five science for doing a crew report uh, while in space near Kerbin. We also got an EVA report for just above Kerbin's water. Uh, we got two mystery uh, experiments, and a recovery of a vessel after a suborbital flight, which in it itself was worth eight science. Grand total, 46. That's what we have to spend on our next unlock. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, go to the research and development centre one last time. And I'm just going to go ahead, buy that, buy this, and buy this. Now you'll notice that this isn't able to be bought yet for the same reason this wasn't a second ago. Some tech nodes need to have two prerequisite uh, nodes already bought before they become available. Like like this one here. This is for the fins, the pilot's cockpit, the first of the unmanned probes, and the normal SAS. That's actually a good one. You see, I've not really got much past this. I've, all, I've only just like tested the early science out just to get a real feel for it and I think the tech, the tech tree is pretty good, albeit it did surprise me a little. I did expect to see like unmanned pods and uh, other such things and, and plane parts first before we really got rocket parts, but I kind of guess it makes sense because it's kind of pushing the player to experiment with rockets before they just like get used to planes and whatnot. And planes can be quite hard at the best of times with all the balancing so I think that's a pretty good thing. All in all, science, uh, science, research and development is worth about four and a half Albert Einsteins. Um, overall, this patch is looking pretty good. If Squad will let me, I'll happily do another video where we actually take on a proper mission to the moon and see if we can do some real science with some decent parts that I've previously unlocked. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, I'll catch you all in a bit, people. Peace out.